All right, counselors, let's get those heart rates up. Let's go, let's go. A lot's been accomplished this year and there's more to come in 2023. We need to stay ready, guys. Yeah, I'm glad the Senior Center folks let us try out their new equipment to prep for the state of the city, even though some of us aren't old enough to be members yet. I'm a member. Who are you calling old there, counselor? Um, uh, yeah, uh, um, what does this button do? You really walked into that one, didn't you, Scott? Hey, wasn't Michael supposed to be here to brief us on his address? Okay, counsel, sorry I'm late. Whoa, everybody's already getting after it. I love it. I absolutely love it. All right, folks, it's time for the state of the city. What do you got for me? Any thoughts, suggestions for my presentation? Well, public safety is always our first priority, and I'm excited about our new mounted patrol unit coming this year. So many benefits to having that specialty unit. Great call, Counselor Ford. That new unit's really going to be a benefit to the organization and the community for events like New Orleans Square Block Party, plus within operations as well. What do you think, Vice Mayor? You know me, Michael. I'm loving what I'm seeing at New Orleans Square. The new intersection is coming along. New businesses are coming in. It's amazing. Don't forget about the new sidewalks we're putting in on New Orleans Square, Vice Mayor. That walkability is so important for our community, so we definitely got to talk about what's happening at New Orleans Square. Hey, Councilman Parks, you got anything on your mind? I think you need to talk about public transportation and the new transit system options that we'll introduce next year. Yes, sir. That's going to be a great idea for our community. The rideshare program and working with Uber, our hotels are really going to love it. What'd you say, Councilman Udi? There's a special election in February. The PSO franchise agreement is on the ballot. It's not every year that we vote on something that will extend 25 years into the future. Now that's a big deal. Absolutely. The renewal of that franchise agreement is so important because we want to make sure that we have affordable and reliable power to everybody in the community. It's also going to help us in economic development. So I can't wait to talk about it at the State of the City because February's vote is going to be so important for our community. What are your thoughts, Mayor? Any pointers? Since we're talking about the future, I think we have to mention the potential housing and demographic study and the streets design study. Those initiatives are going to be critical to the development of our community for generations to come. Couldn't have said it better, Mayor. Let me make a couple of notes here. I am going to touch on our financial stability and all the hard work of Cindy Arnold, our finance director and her team. That's very important. Also, the private investment that's happening in Broken Arrow, it's absolutely amazing that it's happening all over the community and that's obvious by the increase in our assessed value. And also probably one of the most important things is partnerships, is the fact that we have so many private sector and public sector partners that just increase our opportunities to be a great community. So I definitely got to mention that. I just got a notice from the new My Broken Air Action app. Let me read what this says here. State of the city address begins soon. Open app to watch live stream. What? Man, I gotta go. I'll see y'all there. Thanks for the help. Okay, where'd they say the car was parked? Over here, Michael. Oh, there it is right there. Okay, the PowerPoint is ready and here's your script. Oh, thank you, Lisa. I appreciate that. Hey, Aubrey, is the comm teams ready and also did the videos get loaded up for me? Well, I think they're putting the finishing touches on the other video now. Good deal. How long till we get there? We're pulling up now. Seriously, we're already here? You can tell we're not driving around the Lynn Lane or the uh, Broken Air Expressway, that's for sure. All right, ladies, I gotta go. Thanks for all your help, I appreciate it. I gotta get inside, they're waiting on me. I'll see you when you get in there. Bye. I'm glad I made it on time. Okay, this is the first time I had a chance to take a look at the crowd, so let me just kind of step back here for a minute, take a look. Rick Smith, what's up, my friend? Good to see you today. You know, as Pastor Rich Manganero says on Sunday, mor Sunday morning sometimes, when the Spirit of the Lord hits us, he uses the term, whoa. And I can tell you that when I look at the crowd today, that's exactly what I'm thinking. Uh, Jennifer Conway covered a number of the recognitions that I'm going to make, but I'll probably say them again because of how important it is for our community. So um, I am excited to see everyone here today, and I hope you enjoyed the lighthearted video that we put together, kind of just got, kind of liven things up a little bit. You know, this is the most, most wonderful time of the year with the holidays. Well, I can tell you for me, it starts at about 1.15 today once I finish this presentation. 
Uh, I put a lot of time and effort in this because there's so much happening in our city as you're going to find out. Uh, we do have a great crowd here today, and as Jennifer mentioned, most importantly, we have chamber members. They're the folks that are growing our community. We have community leaders, we have city officials and staff, we have our federal delegation, along with other elected officials from other levels of government, and we have many special guests. Um, on behalf of Mayor Deborah Wimpy and the Broken City Council, it's truly a pleasure for me to be here and to present the state of the city for our amazing city. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone for coming today. And also I wanna thank you for taking just a little bit of your time to help us celebrate our successes and the progress that we're making as a community. Let me, at this point, let me mention that we're live streaming our address. And as a result, I'd like to thank everyone that's tuning in now or will be turning in just a little bit later or at some point in the future. Now, where's communications director, Aaron McCulloch? Aaron, let me take this opportunity to express my gratitude and appreciation to your team for producing this address and making it available to the community. I think you all know me very, very well, and I love talking about what's happening in our great city. Despite what's going on nationally, I feel there's an energy and an excitement in this city that it's driving us forward, and that's obvious today by so many people in the room. You know, I get really jazzed up when I have the opportunity to talk about all of our successes, and for me, an hour simply isn't enough time to talk about all the wonderful things that are happening in our city, but I'm gonna do my very best. But I would say this, there's two things I would like for everybody to come away with today. First, I wanna to demonstrate to you how serious the mayor, the council and I are about providing great local government uh, services and governance. And secondly, that when you leave here today that you have a sense of pride and become a champion of all things that are going on at Broken Arrow. Now, as Jennifer mentioned, there are a lot of folks here that uh, she mentioned that I'll also mention um, throughout my address, I'm not going to take a traditional approach and just go, we did this, this, and this. I'm going to have more of a comprehensive approach to detail how the city's doing. And I also want to headline one of the most important focuses we have, and that's Economic Development Administration. And then obviously I need to cover some of the challenges that we need to work through as a community going forward. So there are so many individuals that we partner with every day that are here. And I just want to say that thank you for the success that you've helped us with today, but more importantly, with the success that you're going to help us with tomorrow. I want to start with our city council because I do appreciate the fact that they were uh, here to help uh, participate in the video. We have Mayor Deborah Wimpy, we have the vice mayor, we have Councilman Johnny Parks, we have Scott Udy and Lisa Ford. You know, first I want to say thank you for your leadership and vision for the community. Also for your support that you give to the staff and me daily. It's such an honor to serve such a forward-thinking city council. We couldn't do what we do without your help and leadership. And once again, I'd like to ask everybody to join me in giving our elected officials a round of applause for their leadership and vision for our city. You know, it's not easy being an elected official at any time in our country's history, but especially today with social media and all the chances people have to sit behind a meme and make comments. Uh, I'm very grateful for the council members and their service. Next, under the leadership of Assistant City Manager of Operations, Kenny Schwab, and Assistant City Manager of Administration, Norm Stevens, we have nearly all of the city's department directors and many senior staff members in attendance today. Some are here for the very first time. We also have many of the 900 strong city employees watching online, and I would publicly like to thank them for their dedication to duty, commitment to the organization, and the personal service they give to make Broken Arrow better. I am continually In fact, I'd like to ask all the city employees to stand up so we can rec recognize. If you work for the city, please stand up so we can recognize you. Thank you, everyone. You know, I'm continually bolstered by the talent and commitment of the, the current leadership team and the city employees to ensure that our city thrives. So thank you for all that you're doing. I also would like to thank Chamber President Jennifer Conway and her team for hosting this important event. We're sold out, obviously, and next year I'm going to finally take her advice and we're gonna move over to Stony Creek <laughs> so we can have more folks that can attend. I just like this venue. Um, I've been here for the eighth time and um, actually seven times and so um, it's kind of hard to move away from here, but I know that we need to. Speaking of Jennifer, 
I'm sure that you all heard back in October, she was selected as the 2022 Sheila Lee Chamber Executive of the Year for Oklahoma. And also, where's Lori Lewis? I know I looked at the tables, where's Lori? Lori, raise your hand, there's Lori Lewis back there. Lori was selected as the 2022 Outstanding Chamber Staff Member of the Year. These recognitions, <laughs> These recognitions are awesome and they're well deserved. Not only do they reflect great credit upon Jennifer and Lori for their personal efforts, but likewise they demonstrate the quality of the leadership we have in our chamber administration. And I'd like to thank you for giving them a round of applause because it's very, very well deserved. I also know that we have many members of our chamber and EDC board members here and I'd specifically like to thank Aaron Morris for serving as the chairman of the chamber board and Jennifer Jezik for leading the EDC. It has been a pleasure working with both of this year, and thanks for all of your efforts, and I know that you'll both continue to stay involved. I'd also like to thank the board members that are here for stepping up and giving of your time and helping lead our business community. So thanks for all that you're doing, and just please stay engaged. This next group of individuals, which Jennifer talked about, are our elected officials at the different levels of government. And you've heard me say this on many different occasions, and that is broken air ceiling is right here. However, if we have positive productive relationships with our elected officials, our ceiling only rises. That our success and potential for growth only increases. And it's great to have so many people that are here today that are representing us. Now, I know we talked about Brian. Where's Brian O'Hare at? Raise your hand, Brian. There he is. Okay. Uh, you know, Brian, I tell you, I've, I've worked with you for almost eight years now. Uh, you have done a great job. You've served two congressmen, and very few people have the opportunity to say that. And I know this is your last meeting, and so on behalf of the City Council and myself, thank you for your great public advocacy, and we wish you the very best in, in your next and future endeavors. So thank you. I ask all the senators and, and state representatives for the state of Oklahoma to join us today on behalf of the city, and I'm glad to say that we have nearly all of them here today, and I couldn't be prouder of this group of, of representatives and how they're leading our community. And the one thing I would just ask them to continue to do is to help us make Broken Arrow better, but more importantly, continue to make decisions that make our state better. Because if our state is better, our cities are gonna be better, and I know they're working hard to do that. So let's give our elected officials another round of applause. Next, we have two T Tulsa County Commissioners here today, Stan Salee and newly elected Commissioner Kelly Dunkerley. I've had the pleasure of working with Stan. I see Stan right there for a couple of years now. In fact, I worked with him before he became a County Commissioner. And I can tell you he truly cares about Broken Arrow and it's been a pleasure to work with you. And Commissioner Dunkerley, we're very excited about your representation of us as well. And we look forward to having a long, positive working relationship with you. I do want to mention that last year, the city partnered with Tulsa County to house a satellite office in our Tourism Economic Development Office. This helps bring county administration to us. And I want to share with you some data since we started that partnership. This year alone, through the month of November, we processed over 1,400 marriage licenses. This, also, also, this office also processes no-cost no civil filings for local attorneys and essentially gives those professionals that work on this side of the county an opportunity to come to Broken Arrow instead of having to go downtown. And so I'd just like to thank you for that partnership and say we enjoy working with you and let's keep moving forward together. I'm also proud to report that we're developing some great partnerships with the folks at the Wagner County Commission and the officials at Rural Water District Number 4. You know, there are tremendous opportunities for growth and development in our city in Wagner County. In fact, that's where most of the growth is going to happen in the future. And we need to maximize these partnerships to ensure that we have success for both the county and the city. This year we cooperated with the commissioners on a major road widening project out on East New Orleans and some bridge repairs in another part of the county. We were also able to help Rural Water District 4 by providing them a million gallons of water a day and this was done with the cooperation under the leadership of Kenny Schwab to make sure that they had adequate water supply during the very hot summer months and many of those folks that we provided water to are Broken Air customers and Broken Air citizens. So I just want to say thank you to Rural Water 4 and also thank you to Kenny for making that happen. That's a big deal. And lastly, I'm, I'm really, really excited about this, and this was a recommendation from Larry Curtis, is the City Council recently approved moving forward with creating a Metropolitan Area Planning Commission. This will be one of the most important public policy initiatives that we undertake in recent memory because of the growth that's going to be happening in Wagner County. 
And our goal is to work hand in hand to establish land use regulations, building construction and housing codes in accordance with the new commission that ensure that there is a smart growth and that we're working together as we continue to grow our community. There's another individual I'd like to recognize here today, and that is the Deputy Director of the Indian Nations Council of Governments, and that's Dorita Huckabee. I see Dorita in the very back. Uh, Dorita represents our good friend and Director Rich Briere, who unfortunately could not be here today. The NCOG team, I can tell you, does so much for our city in the areas of grants for transportation projects, financial assistance to several org organizations and entities, such as our Senior Center and other community opportunities. Without question, NCOG is truly one of the most important public partners we have as a city. And Dorita, I'd like to thank you for being here on behalf of the organization. Thank you for all that you're doing. I'm pretty excited about this next recognition. I'd like to recognize our friends Sharon Atchison and Beverly Forrester. Where are you at, ladies? Where are you at? Raise your hand. There she is. Okay. Um, they're with a wonderful organization. Some of you may have heard of them. Some of you may not. It's called Keep Broken Air Beautiful. Last month, KBAB, as they're called, was selected as by Keep Oklahoma Beautiful as the 2022 Affiliate of the Year for Oklahoma. They were also nominated for two other awards. I want to say congratulations to the KBAB organization and all the hardworking volunteers for winning such a prestigious award in our community. Also, thank you for working so closely with the Department of Community Development and our Neighborhood Engagement Vision, Division to keep our city beautiful. Thank you very much, Beverly. Thank you very much, Sharon. Appreciate all you're doing. And finally, Mayor Wimpy and I decided that we were going to expand the number of elected officials uh, that we work with every day and ask them to join us. And we were fortunate enough to have two mayors that I get the privilege of working with every day and one of my very good friends and one of the best city managers in the state of Oklahoma and that's Mayor Joyce Calvert and the city manager of Glenpool, David Tillotson. Dave was a little under the weather and wasn't sure if you're going to make it so it's good to see you brother. Uh, and we also have a very special person from Jinx and that is Mayor Corey Box. Now I understand the word on the street is Corey puts on a pretty good state of the city himself. So. <laughs> so he has giveaways and he does some some of the fun things but you know that's the way jinx does it we do it a little different over here uh, but but i'm sure that you'll have some pointers pointers for me afterwards but I, I couldn't be happier these leaders that's sitting at the table the head table in these two great communities are working hard to move their city forward just like we are in broken arrow and we're, we're, we're so happy that you're able to be here today, and we couldn't be prouder to be working with you on a regular basis. So thank you very much, and you're doing some amazing things. We're in competition with you for economic development, Mayor Box, and we have to win, Jennifer Rush. So <laughs> keep that in mind. Okay, on a personal note, I know my mother, Sue McCoy, is watching up uh, the road in Miami. Uh, she's, a, she's a Miami war dog by heart, and I can get, tell you she is probably Facebook friends or probably a third of the people in this room. And I've always wanted to say this, I've always wanted to say hi mom on television. And so I get the opportunity to say hi to my mom. And also Jennifer stole my thunder when she actually announced that my fiance, Kathleen, Dr. Kathleen Elliott is here. Um, and also her parents, George Foster, Dr. George, Fo George Foster and Rita Foster are in the back. And I couldn't be happier to have them here. And as Jennifer mentioned last year, I asked her to marry me and she said yes, and I couldn't be happier. So thank you, thank you sweetheart. <laughs> Okay, so I've gotten all the recognitions out of the way for the most part, so let's get to this. This is my eighth, eighth State of the City presentation, and while each one of them is special, I'm excited to talk about community engagement, our great partnerships, and the important topic of economic development. When it comes to community engagement, I believe one of my primary responsibilities is to keep the committee informed on everything that's happening at City Hall. This is why I've made a point to end all my videos with the tagline, I look forward to seeing you around town. You can find all of our informative videos on our city's Facebook page and at our website. You know, transparency and engagement is so critical as it relates to the fact that it creates trust and is what we need to move Broken Air forward. That's why you see so much information coming out from the city and the city council because it builds that trust. In my opinion, nothing we have done or nothing we will do will be successful without it, especially in the, today the way our residents get their information. This is why next year the city is going to conduct a citizen survey to find out how the community thinks we're doing 
as well as to gather input regarding our next general obligation bond package. Right now, we are tentatively working on presenting a package of propositions to our voters in mid-2027. Sounds like a long time away, but it's really not. We need to get started the planning in 2024 and want the community input before we get that process started. Through all of our bond programs, we've made some major improvements in our city and we're gonna to continue to do that as we work on our streets, drainage, parks, trails, city facilities and build infrastructure that supports new and valuable economic development projects. So all of these things that I've talked about so far lead us up to why we're here today and I know that's why everybody came, so let me get to it. I can proudly say that the state of our city is once again strong and resilient and that Broken Air continues to get stronger each and every year. We have a thriving, growing community and the opportunity to continue to build a dynamic city that rivals any place in America. And without question, this is the place to be right now, and that's Broken Arrow. You may recall that we were the first city in Oklahoma to reopen the state open after the state during the pandemic back in April 2020, and the interest in Broken Arrow has continued. It's funny, the private sector has figured out that they can make great investments and they can get a return on those investments, and they want to be here in Broken Arrow where it's happening. So I'm excited to say that so many people are now looking at our community, whether it's with the Chamber, the EDC, or our economic development team, everyone is interested in bringing an investment to our city. Let me also point out some other reasons why things are going well. First, our commitment to public safety services and the support that we give to the men and women in our police and fire departments, especially over the last two years. Despite the challenges they face, they have never wavered in their dedication to protecting our residents and keeping Broken Arrow a safe place to live and work. I'd like to thank all of them. Incredible, just incredible. I have more to say about our police department in just a minute. Second, we're developing strategic partnerships with other public and private entities. For example, organizations like our public school administrations, the Chamber, the EDC, the Greater Home Builders Association for the Tulsa metro area, utility providers, veterans organizations, financial institutions, and local community and civic organizations. It seems in every single partnership we have, each one is looking to do something more than the other to make Broken Arrow great. And that is such, such an important part of why we're successful. And finally, as I just mentioned, the major investments being made by the private sector. You cannot underscore the confidence the private sector has that our city is a great investment. We know that developers have so many different opportunities to build their projects in other communities, and we appreciate the fact that they're choosing Broken Arrow. When you consider all these factors and many more that I'll be pointing out, it's easy to see why we're considered one of the best cities in Oklahoma in the entire Midwest to live, work, and raise a family. I believe one of the most important things to consider is the fact that we continue to be a place and have businesses where people want to come to and not go from. And there are so many communities that cannot say this and it demonstrates how truly blessed we are to be a place where people want to come to and not go from. Likewise, we are consistently listed in the top of the state and country and communities that are growing. Our current estimated population, folks, and this is amazing, is over 116,000. That's up 11% over 2010, and we're still growing. If you add the fact that our zip codes were about 136,000, which means we're serving 136,000 residents and businesses. One of the things I'm most proud of is the fact that while we're growing, we're always focused on keeping our city small down feel all the while providing the public services needed to meet the demands of a city our size. Here are two perfect examples that I'd like to include that support the partnerships that we have, and that's with our seniors and our arts. We opened our new senior annex to improve opportunities for our seniors to remain active, and the new Brown Kimbrough Center for the Arts, Innovation, and Creativity located in the Rose District earlier this year. These are two incredible facilities for our community. I'm delighted to report that next year, the city will implement recommendations from an appointed citizens advisor committee that will expand and enhance the programs and services we offer to seniors in our city. Without question, we're very lucky that we now have Kim Crenshaw as our executive director of the Senior Center. Let me ask you this, how about our new art center? If you haven't been inside, you need to check it out. Recently, I was walking one late afternoon, and I saw Executive Director Jennifer Deal. I know Jennifer's here. Where's Jennifer? 
There she is in the back. And I looked in the upstairs window, and I noticed that she was working with a group of kids. The new facility is designed to help young people with an earnest interest in the arts to have a place where they can go and flourish. I want to say thank you, Jennifer, for all your personal commitments. I'd also like to publicly congratulate our Arts Council for their efforts to secure the operational funding for the new center and all the amazing programs they already have underway. The City Council and I couldn't be happier that Kim Crenshaw and Jennifer Deal are leading these two important organizations in our city, and we appreciate your dedication and cooperation to work with the city and thankful that you're here today. So let's give Jennifer and Kim a round of applause for all they're doing. I'd be remiss if I didn't also express my gratitude and appreciation for the great cooperation we have with both our Senior Center and the Arts OK Boards. Thank you to all the individuals that serve on the board and your commitment to continue to work with the city to advance our community. Moving forward, here are some additional examples of why we have a great community. First, we're led by Chuck Perry and Kurt Hartzler. We have great public schools, arguably two of the best in the state, in my opinion. Under the excellent leadership of uh, Chief of Police Brandon Berryhill, Fire Chief Jeremy Moore, and Emergency Manager Director Jamie Ott, we're an extremely safe city. As Jennifer mentioned, Brandon couldn't be here today because he's under the weather. He'll probably be back to work tomorrow, but he wants to send his regrets and just wish everybody for all the support that they give to the police department. Let me take this opportunity here to mention a few of the outstanding successes we've had in, in public safety this year. First, in emergency management, Jamie Ott, our emergency management director, secured a FEMA grant in the amount of nearly $400,000 for our outdoor early warning siren program. These funds will be combined with general obligation bond funds to purchase or upgrade 20 new outdoor warning sirens to help sure that our community is prepared should there be a need to basically turn on those sirens. Next in the police department, we completed the conversion to our new software for the department. That was a $2 million investment that was needed to secure, equip, train, and implement the new system that will enhance the way the department protects and serves. The new software has ushered in a new era of modern policing, which has set the stage for future improvements such as geographic interface reporting and real-time crime center implementation. We can plan for the future now that we have a solid base to work from. Another success has been our deployment of body cameras. We began buying worn body cameras back in early 2021, and the last pat batch was purchased earlier this year to cover our field sergeants. These worn cameras give our officers a peace of mind knowing that it protects their reputation and furthers the professional image of this department. Let me also add that starting next year, we will deploy our new mounted patrol. This new unit will become an integral part of both special events and operations. Okay, let me stop right here, and I want to be very, very clear. Broken Arrow, it has fully funded its police department, its public safety, and I can tell you this without a question, the city council and I will never defund the police department or any part of public safety on our watch. Never, ever, never, ever. Public safety is our number one priority, and to do that, we have to make sure they have the resources they need to keep us safe because if we're not, it will affect every other aspect of our community. And finally, I can't forget our fire and our EMS department. It's been a very busy year. We opened new state-of-the-art fire station number seven near the intersection of South Main and Washington to more strategically to, to serve our community. And also, we've overcome a lot of supply chain issues. You hear about it a lot throughout the, the, the media, and I can tell you they're real. But, but the chief of uh, the fire chief and his staff working with finance and the city council, we found ways to purchase fire trucks and ambulances early to help keep the department fleet ready for action. So I'd like to thank the fire chief and his staff and all of the members of the organization to make sure we could find ways to keep, the, to keep those uh, purchases going. So thank you very much. I also need to, to mention the fact that we have so many great festivals and events that are happening in our community. You know, it's, it's, it's crazy. It seems like something big is happening in our city starting in March every year. All of these events bring over, I've estimated, 100,000 people annually into our city to help support local businesses and causes. I'd like to thank the special events team because I can tell you it's not an easy task trying to manage all the expectations of every single group that would like to do something at Broken Arrow. 
I also need to mention the amazing farmer's market in our award-winning Rose District. Initially, the market started with eight vendors that primarily sold vegetables under the plaza. This season has proven to be the most successful with a total of nearly 100 vendors and upwards of 50 each week during peak times. The success of the market has led to our newest pilot program. We've decided to implement a Tuesday evening market that will operate during the months of December to the end of February between 4 and 8 p.m. It started last week and I understand that we had an incredible crowd. I hope that the results of this pilot program will indicate the need to continue the Tuesday market in addition to the Saturday markets beginning in April. Folks are coming to our city. Our market's amazing, and that's why I need to send a shout out to Coordinator Nicole Orkett and all the members of the Community Development Special Events team that are working so hard to grow that market. All right, so moving on, I saw a post right before I came over here as I was driving in the car. Uh, where's Chuck? Chuck Perry, our, su our superintendent. Uh, one year anniversary today, Chuck? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's awesome brother I've had the privilege of working for you for seven and a half years you know and I can't begin to thank you for the leadership that you're providing the district and the community you know last week I wanted to mention that I really enjoyed your testimony and the update that you gave at the Broken Air Ministerial Assistance Group that's a special group of pastors that are basically praying for our community on a daily basis and they were very impressed with what you had to say about your, your beliefs, your values, and how you're leading our district. And I can tell you right now, folks, we have the right person leading our district. The city loves working with Chuck and his team, and many of them are here today. We also appreciate his genuine interest in partnering with the chamber in the city. And similarly, we appreciate all that the Broken Air and Union Public School Boards, teachers, and support staff are doing for our kids. All of you are absolutely amazing, so thanks for all that you're doing. We're very, very grateful. Let me also recognize two special people, Dr. Steve, uh, Steve Tiger and Sharon Welpley with Tulsa Tech. I'd like to thank you for all that you do for workforce development and the support of our city and the EDC. Man, you're always there for us. Let me also add the support and investment we get from NSU and their leadership led by President uh, Dr. Steve Turner. With potential changes in state legislation, we look forward to the opportunities that will grow the Broken Air Campus and the community in the future. Okay, before we get started and talk a little bit more about what's going on, I'm going to take a break here, and I'm going to show the year-end video. I think it's pretty cool. Give us a reminder of all that's happening. It's about 11 minutes, so just sit back and enjoy. Check your phones, see what's going on, and then we'll be back in just a few minutes. You know, Kenny, for me, there's nothing better than taking some batting practice after a long, hard, and productive year. You know what I mean? You bet. And what a great team we have. They're awesome. Do you have any favorite projects or initiatives from this year? Man, Kenny, why are you trying to pin me down like that? I mean, my gosh, all the projects, we've had 30 or 40 different projects this year. So if I really had to pick one, it'd have to be the Ward Home Memorial, without question. To have that contemporary uh, memorial in our community is absolutely amazing, so I'm very proud of that accomplishment for our city. Rocky, what's your favorite project? Man, I don't know if I can pick just one, but the work we did in the Vandiver East subdivision, the resurfacing work on 81st Street from Fort Worth to Lynn Lane, the resurfacing work on 51st Street from 209 to the Creek Turnpike, those all turned out great and the citizens loved it. Also, the Creative Arts Center turned out fantastic as well. How about you, Larry? We did a lot with public transportation this year, the public transit study, the Uber pilot program, and this machine bikes. What do you think, Norm? Hey, Norm, what are you doing? Yeah, 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 I hear you. Police, fire, economic development, all good stuff this year. Can you actually be specific and name a project? Chief Moore, Chief Barry Hill, Jennifer Rush. Talk to my man, Kenny Schwab. For me, it's got to be opening fire station number seven. Seeing Aspen Ridge come together has been pretty amazing. We've had a lot of community involvement this year. It's hard to beat that. What'd you think, Norm? Love it. Cindy, how are we doing on the finances? Doing great. We're forecasting to come under budget again. This makes me happy, and it makes Tom happy, too. What about you, Matt? Parks had lots of good stuff happen this year, but my favorite thing is the four new turf fields at Indian Springs. But you know what really makes me happy? 
finishing this video since we didn't budget for the electricity out here? Wait, what? Oh no, not that. Recycling's back. Yeah, no kidding. And we've bought five new side loaders that have sped up all our routes. Side loaders? What new side loaders? Cindy! Shh, keep the side loaders on the download. Tom doesn't know about them yet. Yeah, yeah, okay, I get it. Hey, Mr. Spurgeon, you see those five new side loaders? I sure did, Jerry. Great purchase for the community, especially as a part of our new solid waste and recycling program. Of course, you probably already knew that, though, didn't you? Great idea, Jerry. Good stuff, Matt. Thank you, Chief. Hey, Ethan, would you like best this year? Hey, look alive out there, Ethan. Should I sound a tornado siren? Maybe I should get him some water. Last thing I want to see is someone get hurt out here. If that happens, ma'am, we're ready. Wow, the fire department does have fast response times. Yep, that's one of the new ambulances I got this year. That ride is nice. <clears throat> Man, Trevor, you can say that again. Hey, Scott, Ryan, which one of you guys is hitting cleanup? Cleanup? That's what my team does every day. Same, work orders never end. Hey, Scott, Ryan, <laughs> never mind. Hey, Kenny, you know what I'm ready for? What's that, boss? Put one right in here, lay it across here, because I'm going to go Roy Hobbs and knock the cover off the ball. Bring it, baby. Roy Hobbs, my foot, old man. You ready? I got it, dude. Relax. OK, here it comes. Hit this, Grandpa. Ooh, yes! Enough already. Let's get on with the end of the year video, would ya?
Now you can see why an hour just isn't long enough because I didn't even include everything that I could have because we'd probably be here till 145. But I can just tell you that the year in videos allows all of us to kind of just reflect back on all the success that we have. And nearly all of those projects that were listed there were paid for with general obligation bond funds from, from our voters, which obviously is so important to get their support. So Aaron, once again, great job by your team, Michael Godfrey and the entire communications team for both of your videos. You just do some amazing work. Let me also thank all of our department directors and staff members that help with these videos. I have such a great group to work with each day. They're here in the back, they stood up and they were recognized. I already mentioned many of those directors that are doing great work, but there's so many others that I'm going to be mentioning uh, before I close today. But there are a couple that I need to recognize that I think are doing some amazing things, and that is our utility director, Chuck Vokes, our new maintenance, he's not really new, he's been here about 18 months, maintenance, our maintenance director, Ryan Bays, I see Ryan right there, he's got a good looking haircut like I do. Um, HR director, Kelly Cox, she's been in the very back, and city clerk, Curtis Green, are all making positive impacts on organization. So let me transition a little bit more specifically on, on how we're doing. One of the questions I get asked most of the time when I talk to folks is why is Broken Arrow having so much success? Well, I believe the success we're experiencing is not a result of us living in a vacuum. I'd say it's a result of smart choices and collaborations that are being made by many different individuals and entities in our city. And the decisions that are being made, whether the decision made by the city or the school district or in the private sector, they're setting us on a great path for a stronger Broken Arrow. And speaking of collaborations, we had two things that I really must mention that are noteworthy for this year. Back in May, we hosted a historic welcome reception and luncheon with the Muscogee Creek Nation National Council. Nearly every member of the National Council was in attendance along with all members of the Broken Air City Council. We discussed many topics focused on what I like to call unity in the community. We hope these meetings will continue in the future because they're so important because we have a shared citizenry. We also work uh, together on with, with the uh, Muscogee Creek Nation and Mission 22 on the War at Home Memorial, which is located in our Veterans Park. Broken Air has a long-standing history of supporting veterans. In 2021, we opened our new Veterans Center and along with our Military History Center, we make it a priority to recognize the commitment and sacrifice our brave warriors have made for our country. I'm extremely proud of the War Memorial, War at Home Memorial, excuse me, which was completed back in June. This project is special to me for several reasons I'd like to mention them. First, because of my love and respect for veterans as a fellow veteran. Second, because of the awareness that the memorial brings to the important issue of veteran suicide. The memorial is dedicated to the men and women who fought for America overseas and now pay the ultimate price here at home. And finally, the memorial is meant to be a reminder of our losses to honor the present and to work very hard to make sure this doesn't happen again in the future. If you have not seen the memorial, I would strongly encourage you to go down there because it is so important to remember those that lost their lives when they came home from serving us overseas. So when I started back in 2015, I gave my first State of the City presentation. I introduced several areas of policy and operational management that the city was going to focus on to maintain and improve the quality of life. And everything I try to do, and I say this every year, is to try to make things better for the people that live here or the businesses that, work, that basically are, are built here or there's a commitment by the private sector. At that time, I stated that we would undertake this endeavor by focusing on the following priorities. Keep public safety as our number one priority. Second, we would work to improve our infrastructure to ensure it matches the needs of the community. Number three is implement measures that make communication and transparency commonplace in everything we do. Number four is find ways to build upon the great community engagement that exists within our city right now, or at the time, and then ensure we have long-term financial sustainability. From day one when I took over, it was clear we needed a higher level of expectations in the day-to-day -day operations at City Hall. One thing I've learned during my time in city management over 35 years is while most people don't like change, they love the results of change. And many of the positive, dramatic changes that we've made in the organization are why we're getting so much recognition right now. Back then, I shared with staff, and it's still very relevant today, that the council and I want imp the directors to implement ongoing plans and practices that do one thing, make a meaningful difference in the lives of Broken Air citizens. Everything we do is focused on that. Our focus will always be on finding synergies and efficiencies in the way we do business. 
I also continue to ask directors to find legitimate ways to get to yes in everything we do when it comes to helping residents. Some things that we do, people don't always understand, but I can tell you is that we're working to get to yes as often as possible. It sounds like it's pretty simple, but let me be a little bit more specific. I expect all my directors to be yes in being proactive in all that we do. Yes to better customer service and community engagement. Yes to solving our community's problems and challenges. And yes to helping the private sector make smart and sustainable investments in our city. I'm proud to say that with the help of the council, Kenny, Norm, and the entire leadership team, we are getting yes more often and we're making the difference in the lives of the citizens within our city. You may recall that in previous addresses I talked about the importance of improving our public infrastructure to handle the demands of a growing city. When I got here, there were no orange cones anywhere in town. And I knew that we had passed bond packages, but I couldn't figure out why there was no work happening. Over the last few years, here's what we've done. The community passed the 2018 general obligation bond package, by far the largest in the city's history. The voters approved $210 million for nearly 100 infrastructure and quality life projects for our city. Since 2018, we've been implementing that package and we're gonna get it completed in probably eight to nine years. We've developed plans for street maintenance and major road improvements, which is our number one asset. We're working on long range plans for water and sewer infrastructure upgrades and expansion. This is very important to the council because we have to make sure that we can handle the needs of our current customers and those that will come to Broken Arrow. And this is one of the things I'm most important, uh, proud I should say, we've created a leadership team that has the experience, enthusiasm, the tenacity to make tough decisions and possesses the empathy to take care of citizens and the people that work for them. Right now, Broken Air is not only growing out, but we're also growing up and we need leaders that can rise to, the to meet the challenges we have as a city. In the last five years, I believe we've become the most transparent community in Oklahoma. For me, accountability and financial transparency are the hallmarks of a well-run government, which is why the city council and I make it a, a priority to make sure government transparency is always the top of our list. We've been, we, we have and are embracing technology under the direction of IT director Scott Carr and his amazing team. He sees the matrix. If you watch that movie, all those little lines coming down, Scott knows what's, what that is. I certainly don't, but he does. Uh, we're, we're addressing what I call the digital divide and modernizing our enterprise systems to provide more data to help drive our decision-making processes and accountability. And I want to thank you, Scott. We made it a point to stabilize city finances for long-term investments. The growth of an organization requires steady investment and the ability to maintain that investment. Every time we purchase something, every time we add an employee, we make sure there's something that we can sustain. The city can only use property taxes for the repayment of bonds and judgments at this time. Therefore, because the city is so heavily dependent upon sales tax and because it fluctuates, I always take a conservative approach in our budgeting process. Let me give you an example here. In 2021, $1.8 billion of taxable goods were sold in our city. We need to continue to grow our economy by supporting existing businesses and recruit ones so our residents will have more opportunity to shop local. If we don't, it's going to be hard to sustain our operation. This year, to date, sales tax is up 6% and our use tax is about 16% respectively. And this is a very good sign that our economy is growing at a steady pace. I'm proud to say that our fund reserves are following city's poli the city council policies for general government and utility authority. Implementing these strategies has resulted in Mooney's maintaining our outstanding bond rating, which means we continue to be a great investment for the private sector. I'd like to thank our finance director, Cindy Arnold, and her team for all their hard work. Also to recognize her and the finance team for earning for the third year in a row the Government Finance Officer Association's Distinguished Budget Presentation Award. Great job, Cindy. Where are you at, Cindy? I want to thank you for all you're doing. <laughs> Cindy works so many long, hard hours on the weekend, Cindy, and I can't begin to tell you how grateful I am for all that you do. At this point, let me transition to something that I love to talk about, and that is the important topic of economic development administration. Economic development is one of the most important things we do besides public safety and as it relates to measuring the success of a community. In a general sense, it refers to an increase in the production of goods and services in the economy over time. A strong economy will generate revenues that will result in more public infrastructure, more funds for public safety, and other quality of life amenities. 
This success can also attribute to an improved living standards, increased longevity, better parks and recreation, and greater familiarity with the civic and political issues, just to name a few. Right now, I've estimated that we have over 61,000 people that work in Broken Arrow. The city and East EDC have partnered together to create a highly functioning economic development team. Working together, we have a model that promotes private investment and growth in our workforce. Under the leadership of Jennifer Conway and the city's economic development manager, Jennifer Rush, their teams are focusing on, on job growth, especially amongst young professionals with high paying jobs, retention of existing businesses, and adding new businesses that help support the economy as our number one goals. Thank you to JC and Jennifer and JR as I refer to them because we have so many Jennifers. Here are some of the facts that confirm what we're doing is working. The average household income is up 7% over last year. We were 75,000, now it's around 81,000. Likewise, our community assessed value has gone up from around $750 million in 2015 to just over $1.1 billion. Yes, that's over a billion dollars. Thank you. I know that helps the school district. Our school district is larger than our city boundaries, so I know their assessed value is extremely high as well. That creates more dollars to be able to educate our children. This is just incredible when you think about it, that the private sector believes so much that they can get a return on the investment in Broken Arrow. Let me talk a little bit more about economic development administration and some things that are happening. We're striving to have a wide selection of options when it comes to retail and dining, which helps to keep the tax dollars circulating in the local economy. In 2021, the EDC implemented a new program called the BA Blitz. This is the second year of the program, and this year, all the members of the staff and many members of the boards and the city council visited over 200 businesses. Through the Blitz, they were able to build relationships with our business community, identify expansion opportunities, discuss the pain points businesses were having, and assess the needs of our businesses. Next, and this is extremely important, and it's something that was supposed to happen back in the early 2000s but didn't, but under the leadership of Jennifer Conway is we implemented what became known as Amplified BA Initiative. This initiative demonstrates the private sector's commitment to our ongoing efforts to promote economic development and growth within our community. To accomplish this, it takes financial commitment from the private sector to ensure that we have adequate resources to promote workforce development, job training programs, and the staff necessary to develop data-driven information for businesses that are here or that are looking to come to our city. Funding from the campaign will also assist in developing what we're calling an entrepreneurial ecosystem which will be unique to Broken Arrow. I'd like to thank every business and individual that has made a pledge of that campaign because of your efforts over the next five years, we're gonna have the funds available to have a strong economic development team to continue to help businesses expand and to recruit new businesses. So thank you to everyone that has contributed to this program. Shifting to new retail opportunities, Tiger Hill Plaza and Aspen Creek, excuse me, Aspen Ridge developments are major private investments that are happening right now. The new businesses at Tiger Hill have enhanced some ones that are already existing and there's more to come in 2023. Also regarding the Aspen Ridge and South Broken Arrow, working uh, right now, is the developer to complete the 65,000 square foot new Reese's grocery store, plus the 39 acres of development will include 150,000 square feet of new retail, which actually we should be in a position to start making announcements early next year on the additional businesses that are coming. And finally, I wanna to turn to our, our innovation district. In 2021, we purchased a 90 acre tract of land near the intersection of Florence and Olive. As most of you know, aerospace and the oil and gas industries are two of our mainstays. We'd love to build upon the solid foundation that we have in both of these industries. The innovation industry gives us that opportunity, plus the opportunity to add new industries to the already growing list of great business we have in our city. Here are some of the key points I'd like for you to take away today about our efforts on the innovation industry. Our community leadership has completed four research trips to assess the design, assets, and the programming for the district. We're working to finalize the vision for the district. And lastly, the infrastructure and layout design of the district has begun. Our goal is to have the district shovel ready for development within the next couple of years, if not sooner. I couldn't be more excited about the development of our innovation district. I believe the right project and the implementation has the potential to change the face of South of Broken Arrow and the entire community for generations to come. 
Okay, let me jump back to the bigger picture as it relates to business retention and expansion. We have a number of businesses that are here today, both small and large, that have or will be making investments in our community, and many of the leaders of those entities are here today. I don't want to miss anybody, so I'm not going to name them all because that, once again, we'd be here till 2 o'clock. But let me be respectful and say this. If you're one of those businesses that has or is planning to make an investment in Broken Arrow, thank you. Thank you for all that you're doing to grow our economy and just to know that we will be here for you in the short run and the long run as well. I talk about the private sector a lot because the government can't grow the economy. You can't, your highest employment, employer in a community can't be the city, and it's not. It takes the private sector that drives the economy, and I'm so excited to see all the investments that are being considered. I want to shift my focus just a little bit, staying in the area of economic development, and I want to mention Ascension St. John Broken Arrow and their new president, Matt Adams. I saw Matt. Where's Matt at? Right there. All right. I've always believed this, is that every successful community has an excellent health care facility and it's extremely important that we have one here in Broken Arrow and I believe that Ascension is rising to that challenge. Matt has jumped in with both feet since taking over. He was recently appointed to the EDC Board of Directors and I know he's going to be making some great contributions to our, to our city going forward. And let me mention what Ascension is doing. Right now St. John is working on two important initiatives that I think are noteworthy of mentioning. First, they're finishing an 18-bed expansion to the sixth floor of the hospital that will add intensive care and intermediate beds to their facility. This is an $8 million expansion and will basically increase the number of beds at the hospital from 44 to 62 and add roughly 37 new jobs. The phased opening of the new beds is slated to commence in the first quarter of 2023. The other initiative that they're working on is extremely important to me is the fact that in addition to the inpatient capacity, St. John Broken Arrow is currently in the middle of the design phase of a $2 million project that will add a second CT scanner with enhanced cardiac capabilities. This state-of-the-art scanner will increase access to a wider variety of testing and studies with the goal of keeping patients in Broken Arrow for the care they need. That's absolutely incredible. Matt, I want to thank you for all that your team are doing. I know you don't like to take a lot of credit, but every good organization has a great leader, and thanks for all you're doing, and keep up the great work, my friend. Okay. I'm about ready to start my holiday season, so let's start wrapping things up. In the last five years, the council asked the staff to dream big and to leave no stone unturned when it comes to ideas and initiatives that will make the lives of our citizens better. The leadership team working with our community partners has done just that, and we have an incredible number of public initiatives that we completed or are currently in the works. Several of those were in the video. I want you to check out some of the things we have going on right now. First, our gateway signage and iconic structure initiative. This program will help visitors know when they're in our city, and the iconic structure will become a tourist attraction. We hope to start installing the signage early next year. In the area of parks and recreation, Parks Director Matt Hendren and his team got a lot going on right now. I see Matt back there. By the end of this year, we will complete the new turf soccer fields out at Indian Spring Sports Complex. Voters paid for this, this project and we're so happy that it's close to being finished. Likewise, and I'm so excited about this, we're currently working on phase one of the new Elam Park. These improvements will be underway sometime by the end of the, end of the next year, won't they, Matt? Okay, that's good, okay. You're supposed to nod yes, okay. <laughs> Eventually, the new park could also include a community center if the voters approve it in the 2027 bond package. So essentially, we would have Central, Ninhas, and Elam Park Community Center. And there's possibly a partnership that we could be, be considering and be rolling out in the next year or two with the school district regarding that initiative. Also, I have to mention, and I know the vice mayor is going to jump up and down when I say this, and that is the revitalization of New Orleans Square. The creation of the overlay district and the intersection improvements are all part of an ongoing effort to revitalize the square. We can't always be looking at building something brand new. We need to be looking at trying to revitalize those areas where we previous commitments been made and see where we can help. We know that these improvements are working and the focus we have on there because sales tax collections are up significantly in those areas and it's noteworthy that we continue to make improvements in that area. 
Here's something that's going to be extremely important for all of us is the completion of a new community-wide housing study. Because of the tremendous growth in residential development over the last decade and what we know is planned, we need to study the impact future developments will have on our infrastructure, city services, and our school district. We should complete that study next year and then we'll be looking to implement the recommendations that are included. Also, as, as, as Councilman Parks mentioned, our public transportation model. In, a, in Broken Arrow, we are around the 250th largest city in America. And how we serve public transit is woefully uh, not adequate. That's why the council and I decided that we needed to do a study on how we could improve transportation within our community and help shape that transportation efforts in the future. After evaluating the benefits of the study that we completed, we decided to do a micro transit scenario. So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to have defined area or defined routes and then we're going to use a fleet of vehicles, albeit Uber or Lyft or something similar, and then we've secured the funding for the purchase of those vehicles and next year community development is going to roll out a pilot program that will be able to, I know, will improve serving our citizens in our community that are underserved at this time. The next area we're going to be looking at, and this is something that could have decades worth of impact, is the City Council has created a Citizens Committee to help develop a complete street and landscaping plan that develops guidelines for transportation improvements and also for capital improvements along our streets. Obviously, sometimes you need to take a look at how you're doing things and step back and see if we can do them better. And I think this study is going to help us look at our intersections. It's going to look at our main thoroughfares in our community and make sure that Broken Arrow is attractive. As soon as you come in to our city, you're going to know you're in Broken Arrow. And finally, this is something that is extremely important to all of us, regardless of your age, is we will continue to heavily invest in connecting the community with sidewalks and trails. We've included approximately $3 million in the last bond package, and I plan to recommend a similar amount, if not more, in 2027 because walkability is so important. When all of these issues are completed over the next five years, they will have a positive impact and improve the quality of life for residents in our community for decades to come. As Councilmember Scott Udy mentioned in the, in the initial video, I'd like to mention the upcoming public vote on the renewal of PSO's franchise for public, providing public utility, I'm sorry, electricity. We spent most of last year working with PSO officials, including Michael Gordon. I know Michael's here. He's going to be the president or the chair of the chamber next year. And basically, we work with Michael. And as a result of those efforts, we've come up with, I'll see some other members of PSO as well. Okay, Jennifer. There's another Jennifer. Okay. Um, the proposition will be on the ballot on April 14th to look at a 25-year contract with PSO to continue to provide us with affordable and reliable power. Now, the vote's going to be on, on, April, on, excuse me, on February 14th, and so I think we're going to come up with some time of uh, get out to vote before you, uh, before you take your Valentine to dinner. So I know the mayor's going to want to do something along those lines. And so I want to thank PSO for your efforts. I think we have an incredible agreement with you, and I am certainly hope that we're going to work hard to get it passed because that's going to be great for us for the next 25 years. In addition to PSO, we have some great utility providers. They include the likes of Cox Communication, AT&T, Windstream, Kinetic, and ONG. Each one is, is working to provide our community with great services, affordable rates, and reliability. I know that members of each of these entities are here today, and I'd like to thank you for your commitment to Broken Arrow. I mean, those are hard jobs, folks, trying to, to meet the demands, and I can tell you, as I talk to them on a regular basis, and they are working very, very hard to make sure that we have great services that are affordable and, most importantly, reliable. Now, it wouldn't be a state of the city if I didn't talk about the most important thing, and that's road improvements. I can tell you that right now we have planned for this year close to $50 million worth of public investments that's going to be done in our streets as well as our utility department. In my opinion, the more orange cones we have, the better because they represent progress, construction, and growth. And while the, the inconvenience is temporary, it's going to set us on the stage to be able to handle the capacity of residents, cars that actually come in and out of our community. Now, there's going to be a list of road improvements we're going to put on the road here. And I'm listing these because these are the big ones. These are the ones that the council and I hear about the most. As you can see, these are the roads going east and west and a couple north and south that are going to make a huge difference of getting in and out of Broken Arrow. I see Travis Smalls here. He's the charge of transportation in the Department of Engineering. And I want to take this opportunity to send a shout out to Rocky Hinkle on the street and, and Stormwater Department. I see Tim Wilson. You all are doing an amazing job of maintaining our roads with the revenue you have 
and you do an incredible job. And also I know Ethan Edwards is here. Thank you for leading the engineering department. Managing the capacity of trying to complete all these roads is no, no easy feat, and I thank you for all that you're doing. And the final area before I wrap it up is obviously, as I said this on, K, on KRMG last night, is that Broken Arrow does have challenges. Not everything we do, uh, we're having success. Like any growing community, there's going to be things that we just simply don't have enough money for. To sit here and say that everything is unicorn and rainbows is simply not the case. So I like to, cha I like to challenge head on the, cha the things that I know we need to work on. And some of these are keeping council members and I awake at night. But I believe we have a great leadership team and we have partners that all have a common thread, and that is making Broken Arrow better. The first area that we've got to do something about, and I know we're working on it, and that is the fact that the traffic in our community has increased significantly in some areas of town. And fortunately, we have Rocky's team and we have Ethan's team that are working on trying to address street maintenance and the expansion of roads. The two biggest challenges we have is the fact that we need to reconfigure Lynn Lane and Highway 51 and Elm Place and Highway 51. Here's the challenge. The Lynn Lane corridor, including the mile from Kenosha to Albany, is going to cost $42 million. That's to do it right. That includes increasing the size capacity, the turning lanes, the bridge, and so forth. And the cost to complete the Elm Place and Highway 51 is over $30 million. We applied for two federal raise grants in 2021 and 2022, respectively, for these intersections, and we weren't funded. And fortunately, we did, through the efforts of NCOG, receive $3 million to help us with Elm Place and Highway 51. So in the coming years, the City Council and I are going to have to look at every funding available option to be able to address how we reconfigure these two intersections. And believe me, we hear about it. In fact, about, about 1.15 today, when the uh, holiday season starts, Kenny Swab will adjust the lights a little bit on along Kenosha and, and Lynn Lane because the calls will be coming in because of the number of cars, and it's just simply over capacity. But we're going to continue to work to find ways to fix this. It could be in the next general obligation bond package. It could be some type of special uh, sales tax initiative that would roll off after a certain period of time, but we're not going to leave any rock or stone unturned until we find a ways to pay for these two important intersections. The next thing I want to mention is the fact that while public safety is our number one priority, it's an expensive proposition. And we recently learned that the law that was passed by the uh, local, the state government about a year and a half to two years ago to create the opportunity to consider uh, public safety districts and use property tax to support public safety will not stand a legal challenge. As a result, we've lost a temporary avenue in terms of additional money for public safety. But I can tell you this, we're going to go back to the legislature, we're going to talk to them over the next couple of years, and we're going to look at all available options to continue to make sure that we have not just us, but cities like Glenpool, cities like Jinx, have the funding they need to keep their city just like Broken Arrow is trying to keep our city. And the other thing that also I want to mention is solid waste disposal. You know, it doesn't matter what's going on in the economy, it doesn't matter what's going on in Washington, the trash shows up every week. Every single week it shows up. And I can tell you that we have the right person in the place right now, and that's Jerry Schuber, our director. Jerry understands solid waste. He's a mad scientist when it comes to figuring out how to move the trash along. And I couldn't be happier that Jerry joined our team a couple of years ago. In short, we've got to figure out how to reduce the number of miles we're putting on our vehicles after we pick up the trash because we have to go to West Tulsa to dispose of that trash. And I think the solution to that is some type of regional partnership to create a, a transfer station. And so we're going to be partnering over the next few years with other communities to look at the options that we have that are available to be able to meet the needs long term to stabilize our rates and reduce operational costs. So I know Jerry's going to do a great job and what Jerry's really good at, he's good at basically turning challenges into opportunities. So thanks, Jerry. Keep up the great work. So let me finish up here. How am I doing on time? Actually, I'm a little bit over. Okay. In conclusion, I think that we can all agree that we have an amazing city. As I mentioned throughout my address, there are so many people responsible for Broken Arrow's success right now and for keeping us responsive to the needs of our citizens and businesses. I believe the state of our city is dynamic and we're unified. Unified in the belief that we're stronger together and working as a team, we can continue to build a better Broken Arrow, enhance the quality of life for current residents and generations to come. I believe 2023, despite what maybe happened nationally, is going to be another exciting year for our city and the council and I are asking you to help us join us 
on this journey of continuing to move Broken Air forward. I'd like to thank the Chamber once again for hosting this event. I'd like to thank all of you for attending. And last but not least, I'd like to thank the Broken Air residents for all that they do to help us with initiatives, being a part of what's going on, and give us feedback on what we're doing. So until next year, the City Council and I hope that everyone has a blessed Christmas and a prosperous new year, and that God continue to bless Broken Arrow, the state of Oklahoma, and the great United States of America. Thank you. I was so enthralled in that that I forgot it was me to come up and close this thing out. So uh, what an incredible city we live in. Thank you, City Manager uh, Spurgeon, for an, an incredible address. Is that video going to be available for us to use against you later? Okay, good. No, it was really, it was really good. I um, want to uh, close this out for today, and I want to thank our pres presenting sponsor, Floral Haven, Netlink Solutions, The Persimmon Group, Tulsa Tech, Bass Bank, our monthly sponsor, Balanced Bookkeeping, Oklahoma Natural Gas, our new member welcome sponsor, Hightower Accounting and Tax, our table sponsor, Arclight, Ascension St. John Broken Arrow, Express Employment Professionals, J.D. Young, Kinetic by Windstream, Manpower, Miss Helen's Private School, PSO, and our host sponsor, uh, Broken Arrow Public Schools. And I hope you can join us uh, next month in January. We'll be the Chamber in Broken Arrow Economic Development Corporation's annual meeting, and we'll report on our organizations and to our investors and then we will also be talking about what's to come in the next year so have a blessed uh, and prosperous holiday and christmas merry christmas to you all and we will see you next year